Hi, I'm Wade Wingler with the Indata Project at Easter Seals Crossroads in Indiana. This is video number two in our series on simple ways to make your website a little bit more accessible. In the first video, we talked a little bit about why you need to make your website more accessible, and we gave you a quick demonstration of how somebody using screen reader technology might do some simple web surfing. In this video, we're going to spend a little time talking about the Wave Toolbar, which is a free tool for Firefox. And what the Wave Toolbar bar does is gives you some well, fairly automated checking to see if there are problems with accessibility in your website. I have to start off with a disclaimer though that says that no automated tool will ever replace a human being's ability to go in and make judgment calls about things that are accessible or not accessible on your website. So although the Firefox, uh, the Wave tool for Firefox as well as some of the automated, the other automated checkers out there are very useful tools, they're not the only tools and they're no substitute for really learning how to create accessible content from the ground up. So after that disclaimer, I'm going to spend a second showing you that the first thing you need to do to use this system is to um, get a copy of the Firefox browser. And if you haven't done that before, you just simply search for Firefox in whatever your favorite browser is, and it will take you to a place where you can download and install Firefox. And that's the browser that I'm running here on my Mac right now. Once you have Firefox installed, the next thing you want to do is look for the Wave toolbar. And you're going to find that at wave.webaim.org slash toolbar. And when you go there, it'll give you a link where you can download and install the Wave toolbar for the Firefox browser. The nice thing about using Wave on Firefox is that Firefox is a browser that works on pretty much any computer system, whether you're using a Mac or Windows or um, another operating system, this is going to work for most of your computer needs. So what I've done is I've installed the Wave toolbar and what it does is create a list of buttons right below the address bar here that will help me spend some time looking at a website to see if it's accessible. So I've already loaded up um, our website which is EasterSealsTech.com and the very first thing I want to do to check for some uh, basic accessibility is to click on the errors, features, and alerts button and that has the red icon right here at the top left. And when I click on this button, it's going to reload the web page and it's going to look for errors that have to do with accessibility. And you'll notice that it's sprinkled several icons down here in my website and at the top it says, uh-oh, Wave has detected four accessibility errors. Now, um, I'll tell you that we know that there are some errors on our web page, and for the moment we've decided to kind of live with them, um, and you'll see why here in a minute. Um, but when you load your web page and look for accessibility features and errors and alerts, don't be surprised if you find some things, and don't be afraid, because many of these things can be fixed. Um, so what happens is, as I look down through here, it gives me some icons, and when I point at them, it tells me a little bit of information about them. This one says there's a JavaScript in the head, and it's yellow. Yellow means that it may or may not be an accessibility error. You need to look at it and do some judgment calls. Here's another one that's yellow, and it says alert that this text might be a heading and might need a heading um, on it, and, and it does. It's an area of the website that we need to fix. Down here, you're going to see that I've got some green, a green icon, and it says that there's a feature, which is a form label. And so this search box down here has a form label, and it's labeled appropriately so that assistive technology, specifically screen readers, are going to be able to find it. And then you're going to see up here we have some red errors. And errors are the most important things we want to look for, and it's one of the most common errors that we see. Missing alternative text on this button, the plus sign, this button, the 100% sign, and then this button, the minus sign. And I would have to tell you, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that there's a little bit of irony that we have some buttons here to increase and decrease the size of the font on our website, and those buttons aren't labeled. Now, we happen to use a WordPress installation for our website. We use that program because it makes some things a little bit easier, but one of the drawbacks of WordPress is that we use a lot of plugins to make the WordPress website do what we want it to do. We really like this plugin that allows us to zoom in and zoom out on the website and make text bigger and easier to see. The one thing we don't like about it is it has this accessibility problem. So we are currently in the process of looking for another tool that will allow us to have this functionality of zooming in and zooming out in a way that we like. 
but is also has the alt tags. Our other option, and we're considering this too, is to reach out and contact the maker of this plugin, this tool that we've got here, and ask them to inc include alt tags on those items. So that's getting a little bit technical, um, but I want you to know that as you look down through your page, you're going to see some green things that show that you've done well, some yellow things that show that you might need to have some manual checks and to learn a little bit more about what's going on there and make some decisions, and then occasionally you're going to find some red things um, that mean you need to deal with them. Now, it may be a little confusing to see all these different icons right here. And one of the important things I want you to do is click on the icons key right here at the top and the far right hand end of the wave toolbar. When you click on it, it takes you to a website that shows you all the different icons that the wave toolbar uses when it's overlaying your page and giving you feedback about accessibility. And if you point at these, they're going to give you the same labels that you see when you're just hovering in your website, but if you click on them, it'll take you to a table here that gives you quite a bit of detail about what that error is. Now, if you're the web developer, sometimes this information will mean something to you and you know how to fix it based on a missing, a missing alternative text tag. Um, sometimes you might need to pass this information on to developers if you're an administrator or it's not your responsibility for the more technical side of things and let them know that these are the problems. But this list of icons here will give you a lot of information about what WAVE is trying to tell you when it shows you these errors on your website. The next thing I would recommend that you do after the errors, features, and alert button is just to move to the right here to the very next button, which is structure and order. And when you click on it, it's going to tell you a few different things. It's going to show you your heading levels. And we have some issues here that I'd like to see fixed with our heading levels because we should have a heading level one tag up here as a main headline, and then we should have a heading level two here as a subheading, which we do, and then we need heading level three below that. So we've got a little bit of work with our WordPress installation here to make those heading levels a little more clear and a little more navigable. These numbers here also give you some idea of the order and the way things are presented on a website so that as people are moving around on your website, this gives you an idea of what they're going to find, <clears throat> excuse me, and in what order. Now, in the last video, I showed a screen reader, and I indicated in that video that you have to know some special keystrokes to learn to navigate a website with your screen reader. And I think that's a great idea. I think anybody who creates web content should learn enough about a screen reader to get around a website and figure out what the experience would be like for somebody who uses that screen reader technology. However, if you don't have the time or the interest in doing that, then come over here to the third button on the Wave toolbar and click the text only button. And what that does is stretch, strict out or take out all the non-visual elements or all the visual elements of your website and leave you with the text only version. So this is about what a screen reader is going to read on this website for somebody who's using one. So if I go back to the basic web page you see lots of visual elements and lots of layout but if I click this text only button it's a little bit like looking at this website with a screen reader and that'll give you some idea of what your website is going to do for a screen reader user and how it's going to hold up. And you can look down in here and see I think the web page does a pretty good job of um, giving the information that we want to give about uh, the, the content that we're providing even though the visual pieces of that is taken out. So what I would suggest you do is when you go in and you get your errors and your features and your alerts on your website, make a list of notes. Make a list of things that you would like to improve on because in the next video we're going to show you where you can get some very technical details on how to implement changes that might be useful for making your website more accessible. So um, until the next video, I'm Wade Wingler with the Indata Project at Easter Seals Crossroads in Indiana.